Six finalists from Peter Jones Enterprise Academies across the country have travelled to London in pursuit of a career-defining investment. I know my product is the best. I need to continue with my business and the only way I can do that is to win the £5,000. Their mission, to pitch their business plan to a panel of industry experts. Finalists will have to have their wits about them. And prove that their business is the next big thing. They're going out of the theoretical and the classroom to actually trying to find real customers, real suppliers. But £5,000 absolutely key, so that's the stepping stone for making their bedroom idea become a reality. We're looking for the next Levi route. We're not going to make it easy for them, but that's the reality of life, that's business. With a £5,000 investment up for grabs, this moment could radically change their future. But it won't be easy. These are six people, they've already gone on a journey, been shortlisted, but now this is their moment of truth, rather them than me. In my brain I know what I'm doing. I'm feeling really nervous now. I've been waiting for this moment for a very long time. I'm ready for this. Who will be crowned Peter Jones Enterprise Academy National Entrepreneur of the Year? Hello. My business idea is a makeup brand that specialises in foundation for ethnic skin tones. It all started around one year ago when I would visit my local Boots or Superdrug store and I would search the concessions and walk around the aisles going round in circles in the hope that there was something I could find for my skin complexion. I realised that, you know, it's not only me that's going through this, there are other females that feel exactly the same. Ebony Cosmetics is the UK's first high-end makeup brand that specialises in foundation for ethnic skin tones. I like the name. Thank you. Sort of ebony ivory type of yeah. play on, on yeah. words. They definitely got the sense of my passion. Is this purely a concept? Yes, this is a concept. So I've been working alongside a chemist to sort of get a formula together. Okay. Have you got any idea of how much it's going to cost to produce? Thousand pounds to formulate six shades. Yolanda, thank you very much. Well done. Thank you. I held my nerves together really well, which was really surprising. I thought I was going to be so nervous. I think I've done enough to win. Well, that was a confident pitch as ever I've seen yeah. one. Oh, absolutely. You could see her yeah, selling her own yeah. product. I mean, no one can sell it. You know, no one cares as much about your product as you do. Panda Skateboards is a skateboard business that uses bamboo instead of traditional maple to make skateboards. Traditional skateboards are made from maple trees, and that's led to uh, the skateboard industry becoming the number one cause of maple deforestation. Bamboo is stronger and lighter than maple and also grows quicker. I don't know if any of you have seen kind of recently emerging products made from bamboo. My watch is made from bamboo. I've got uh, a bow tie made from bamboo. Sunglasses, like you can do like clothing. My sister's got a dress. Because it's a grass, not a tree, it grows like your grass in your garden. So when you cut it down, it grows in bigger quantities. I'm here today to gain the investment of £5,000 to put towards a laser engraver so I can engrave the designs on my board. So Jamie, have you sold any of these yet? I haven't sold any skateboards yet because I'm waiting to kind of decide if the laser engraving is the best route to go. You kind of walk in and it's all scary and it's like, oh my God, it's Peter Jones. And then he kind of like smiles at you. Can you put the sunglasses on? Show me your watch and hold your skateboard. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Once they kind of understood the product, it was quite easy to talk to them about kind of the benefits. Really yeah. unique idea. His logo, I his, I mean, his, his colleague came awesome. up with that. Yeah. I love the sunglasses. I think you guys look great in the sunglasses. <laughs> the only other side is that at the moment he hasn't sold any oh, no, that's what worries product. Me. Will yeah. people buy it? My name is Sophie Taylor. I'm 17 years old. Hi, Sophie. My business idea is Malheur Coffees. Wonderful, thank you very much. It's a cold coffee-based beverage which provides many health benefits. Malheur Coffees are made of hazelnut and coconut milk, which provide nutritional benefits, such as being high in protein, being high in folic acid and omega-3 fatty acids. Malheur Coffees are a new, diverse and exciting taste that can be enjoyed by absolutely everybody. What stops a Starbucks or the major players doing a very similar thing? Well, Starbucks are known to be of really high sugar levels and for their retail products they charge between £1.59 to £2.50 for 200 mils, whilst my product is 500 mils and I charge £2, so it's double the quantity for less of the price. 
So it's purely the health benefits, the fact that at the moment your product has got two things in it that you're saying is healthy, which is the hazelnut and the coconut milk, is that right? Yeah. And what about all the cream on top? At the moment I can only sell to two outlets. If I won, it could be outsourced, made in a factory and delivered directly to my outlets. It's a tough business that she's trying to enter, but I was quite surprised she sold 612 units. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So she's made nearly £800 pounds gross margin. And actually, it tastes good. It's actually quite nice, isn't it? It tastes, quite nice. it tastes really good. <laughs> a few times where I thought I really wish I wouldn't have said that, but I hope that they see the potential of our product. Hello. Hello. My business is Vanity Decay and I sell beauty storage. So I sell holders for makeup and they can hold lipsticks, powders. They save space by being on a dressing table rather than being in drawers. Thank you everyone for having me today. I'm really excited to be here. I'm Emma and I'm here to talk to you about my business, Vanity Decay. The average woman now spends £140,000 on makeup and hair in her lifetime. So with the makeup industry booming and women spending more than ever on these products, it would just follow suit for places to put them to also grow with it. Emma, is this your design? This is an adapted design. This is an adapted design, but they are mine. Only I sell it and this is my design. My products are all unique to me. They're all made for me. They're my products. No one else has those exact ones. How did you come up with the name? What does decay mean to you? It means to to rot. It's a weird name for a, for a brand that perhaps is about making you look better. It's only created a talking point. Amongst well, us. that's, the, that's what I like yeah. about yeah. it, actually. Yeah. It's, it's memorable. Fact, it's memorable. Everything I said is what I wanted to do. I don't think I could have improved too much in that aspect. What I was really impressed with was her range of sort of skills. So she's not just put together yeah. the, the packs, she's created the product. She's clearly got great handle on marketing and how to get a product out there. She's really thought about her business, mm -hmm. and she's shipping abroad into across Europe. Yeah, multi currencies. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Today, I'm going to talk to you about my business, Gem Photography. We have a photographer expert <laughs> in the house. I know. I was a, I was a bit worried about that. <laughs> <laughs> photography studios these days they like to. Photoshop everything. I USP is that it is natural. I don't like airbrushing and that comes from my own experience. Unfortunately I had a breakdown with depression and was diagnosed with anxiety. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> when I was going through my depression my mum and dad thought it'd be a really nice idea for me to have a photo shoot. Unfortunately the airbrushed my stomach, so I had a nice, lovely flat stomach, got rid of my bingo wings, and the pictures were really nice, but I didn't like them personally, because it just didn't look like me. The photo shoots that we do, like from pregnancy to newborn, it's a nice story. I was thrilled that there was a, a photographer coming in today, and I think the concept that you've got, you know, natural photography, you know, I, to I totally buy the concept. The CEO of Jessup's really liked the idea. Your pictures are beautiful. Thank you. Have you sold any of these yet? I've had about four clients and two of them have actually been recurring clients. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. She's clearly good at what she does. Yeah. She's a great photographer. She's got passion for it. You know, you can say, you know, not just photography, but the way she takes photographs, the whole ethos behind the, you know, no airbrushing and natural photography and all the rest of it. You know, yeah. it's obviously something that means a lot to her. So. I mean, I do believe in a little bit of airbrushing, to be fair. <laughs> but I think it's in moderation. <laughs> My business is Vicuña Royale. Um, we are the world's first brand to specialise and exclusively sell products made from Vicuña, which is the world's finest natural fibre. The Vicuña um, is an animal native to South America. It's a relative of the llama. Until 2008, the Vicuña was endangered, so you couldn't actually trade um, in its fleeces. So it's a really new product to be on the market. We make garments such as scarves, gloves, socks, even suits. And to give it some perspective, so that we know what we're talking about here, that's your pricing. It's £24,000 for a jacket, yep. £6,000 for a scarf, yep. £10,000 for a slightly bigger scarf or sure, yeah, yeah. and £24,000 for a lady's jacket. Mm -hmm. 
hence why you're targeting the sort of 5% richest people yeah. in the world. The panel were really quite enthusiastic about it. We have actually got six uh, clients. Six clients already? Yeah. And they seem to understand the concept, the market that I'm looking for. You'd want to end up leaving the price label on, wouldn't you? To yeah. let people know that it really is expensive. <laughs> yeah, and that's, the market research shows that, yeah. It's sold into the pattern. I think I've got a chance. Um, I've sold him everything that I've got. At the start, I was quite sceptical about, about the business, about having listened and heard his pitch. I think it, the business and the opportunities is much about him. I thought he was really good as an individual. Yeah. I wonder if you have to be a, perhaps a little bit tipsy to order a, a 24,000 <laughs> jumper Bacunia. and jumper. <laughs> seem to say it every year. That actually wasn't easy. It's been great to hear these wonderful pitches. The judges had to choose just one candidate. And the decision was tough. I'm not so sure as a business it's really sustainable. No. Credible, very likeable. I actually think he could sell snow to Eskimos. It's a cottage industry. Yeah. It's one person making something that can be done in a small way. That's the best pitch I've seen in four years. That value of authenticity came through. Incredibly inspiring, engaging speaker. Six finalists. But only one can be National Entrepreneur of the Year. We've made a decision. I'm very happy with the winner. Are you? Absolutely, Peter. There was a, a standout winner today. Four years of doing this, uh, for me, there's a clear winner. The winner of the Entrepreneur of the Year 2016 is...